Today, let's look at quadratic inequalities. Example 1, solve x squared plus x minus 2t is less than or equal to 0. The first step is to find the zeros of this quadratic. So we'll look at x squared plus x minus 20. And I will set that equal to 0 to solve for the zeros. In this question, I'm able to factor using the diamond technique. So we have a negative 20 on top, a 1 on the bottom. The two numbers are 4 and 5. We'll use a negative 4. This factor is as x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 5 is equal to 0. This is good. Now we could solve for x. x is equal to 4 or x is equal to negative 5. This is by setting each of the factors equal to 0 and solving for x. Now what does this allow me to do? Well it allows me to look at all of the solutions of the quadratic that are less than or equal to 0. So I can actually draw a number line. We'll draw a number line and we'll plot the value of negative 5 and the value of positive 4. Now I have a graph that's not drawn to scale but it gives us the general idea. We know that we want to include 0 as a solution because it's less than or equal to 0. So we need to include 0 as a solution so we'll fill in these circles here. These are going to be closed circles because at x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 4, these are actually solutions to the quadratic. x squared plus x minus 20 is equal to 0 at those values. So since the inequality includes the equal sign, we're going to fill these in because that's part of our solution set. Next, we'll look at values that are to the left of negative 5, between negative 5 and 4, and to the right of the 4. So I'm looking at the region on the left side of negative 5, between negative 5 and 4, and on the right side of 4. So there's three regions. Imagine if you had a rope and you cut it with the point to negative 5 and 4, you would have three pieces. That's why we need to test three regions. So we're just going to make a little table to help us pick a test point. And you can pick any test point that you want. So I'm going to pick anything to the left of negative 5, so we'll pick negative 6. Next, we'll pick anything between negative 5 and 4. I'm going to pick 0. That's an easy number to use. What's on the right side of 4? I will pick whatever I want. I'm going to pick a 5. On top of this, I like to put the factors. So we'll put x minus 4 as a factor. And we also have x plus 5 as a factor. And on the far right, we'll put all of them together. And this is going to help us determine the sign. We know at x equals negative 5, it's exactly 0. And at x equals 4, it's exactly 0. That means all other values that we use to substitute into the inequality is going to be either a positive or a negative. It can't be 0 because it's only 0 at negative 5 and positive 4. So it must be either positive or negative. If I plug in negative 6 into the factor x minus 4, I get a negative 10. I don't care about the value, I just care about the sign. So that's negative. And then if I plug in negative 6 plus 5, overall that's going to give us a negative number. And we're going to continue this process. 0 minus 4, that's a negative number. 5 minus 4, that's a positive number. 0 plus 5 is a positive number. 5 plus 5, that's a positive number. Now, I don't care about the actual value. We only care about the sign. So let's continue now. On the right side, you'll see it's 
x minus 4 times x plus 5. But I know x minus 4 is negative. x plus 5 is negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So this gives me a positive. x minus 4 is negative. x plus 5 is positive. And if you multiply those together, a negative times a positive, that's a negative. <coughs> And at the very end, we're multiplying the positive times another positive, so that's going to give us a positive. Now, the reason we make a sign chart is to determine which solution to keep. We want all of the values here that are less than or equal to zero. That means I only care about the negative results right we want the results that give us a negative answer that's less than or equal to zero so there's only one row that has a negative at the end here this is a negative at the end we know x minus 4 times x plus 5 is only negative for a number that's between negative 5 and 4 the test point was zero and we picked it between there so I'm going to shade that solution so anything that we pick between negative 5 and 4 is going to give us a negative result for a quadratic. And therefore, the solution is less than or equal to 0. That's good. Now we could write our answer in interval notation. Here's our solution. It's a square bracket negative 5, comma 4, and also another square bracket. Now let's visualize. Let's visualize what this actually means. If I were to graph x squared plus x minus 20, let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to go to Decimos.com. We'll graph the quadratic x squared plus x minus 20 on Decimos. And if you look carefully, we have an x-intercept at negative 5, 0, and a y-intercept at 4, 0. Those are are zeros. That's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now if you zoom out, you'll notice that between negative 5 and 4, the graph goes underneath the x-axis. That's why our solution is between negative 5 and 4 because x squared plus x minus 20 is less than or equal to 0 between those two values. And that's why our solution is from negative 5 to 4. In example 2, we'll try a similar strategy. We'll start by looking for those zeros. In this question, it looks like it is not factorable. x squared plus 6x plus 4 it is not factorable. We try to factor it and it's not going to work. So we could do several things. We could use the quadratic formula or we can complete the square. I'm going to choose completing the square. The reason for that is the middle term is even. And so I'll rewrite it as x squared plus 6x is equal to negative 4. And I'm going to leave some space because we're going to have to complete the square. To complete the square, we need to add b divided by 2 squared to both sides. And in this case, it's 6 divided by 2 squared, which is 3 squared, or 9. I need to add 9 to both sides of this equation. On the left side, this factors as x plus 3 squared. And on the right, it's negative 4 plus 9, which is 5. Again, for completing the square, there's a shortcut. You just take that b divided by 2, and that gives you this 3 in the parentheses. Let's take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. And so this gives me x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. We can subtract 3 to both sides now, and this gives me x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. So we have two zeros. 
One is negative 3 minus root 5, and the other is negative 3 plus root 5. I will use my Desmos scientific calculator to find these values. Let's go to the Desmos scientific calculator. And we're going to enter the value negative 3 minus the square root of 5. That gives me approximately negative 5.2. So we have negative 3 minus root 5 is approximately negative 5.2. So write x equals negative 5.2. And x is also approximately, we'll do the plus 1 now, negative 3 plus root 5. And I have negative 0.8, so about negative 0.8. X is approximately negative 0.8. Now we can do the number line. We can plot our number line just to help us visualize where our solutions are going to be. We have the point negative 5.2 as our first point and the other one is negative 0 0.8 as our second point. Now what kind of circles are these supposed to be? What kind of circles are these supposed to be? Well if I look at my original inequality it's x squared plus 6x plus 4 is greater than 0 so it doesn't include 0 I'm going to keep these as open circles. We're going to keep these as open circles. But I still need to check numbers to the left of negative 5.2, between negative 5.2 and negative 0 0.8, and to the right of negative 0.8. So I need to check the three regions again. And so we'll build a sign chart. We'll pick some test points. What's a good number to the left of negative 5.2? I'll pick negative 6. What's a good number between negative 5.2 and negative 0.8? I'll pick an easy one. Let's pick negative 1. What's a good number to the right of negative 0.8? We'll pick 0. That's an easy number to use. And on top, we always like to put the factors, but in this case, x squared plus 6x was not factorable, so I'll put the whole thing x squared plus 6x plus 4. And we'll look for the sign. If you plug in a 0 into x squared plus 6x plus 4, you're going to get a positive number. right? We don't really care about the value. All we care about is it's, it's a positive number. If we were to plug in negative 1 into x squared, plus 6x plus 4, you're going to get a negative result. Check that work on your own. Plug in negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 plus 4, you'll get a negative number. And if you use negative 6 into x squared plus 6x plus 4, you're going to get a positive number. So do the work for it. Plug it in and check with a calculator and making sure this is in fact a positive number. And you can do that work on your own. It's pretty easy with a calculator just to make sure it is definitely positive or negative. Okay, so now we know that these values are positive if we're to the left of negative 5.2. It's negative if it's between negative 5.2 and negative 0.8. And positive if it's to the right of negative 0.8. Now, which solution are we concerned about? We want to find the values that are greater than 0. So I'm going to look at the positives. Because we want x squared plus xx plus 4 to be larger than 0 or positive. So that means... We're looking at this row and this row. It all depends on the inequality. Since we want bigger than 0, it must be positive. And negative 6 was right here. Negative 6 was between 
this region we'll shade that in and zero was on the right side of negative 0.8 so we'll shade that in so what's our solution well our solution is in interval notation negative infinity comma up to negative 5.2 that's an approximation I usually prefer the exact form so we'll write the exact form for that and that was negative 3 minus root 5 that's on the left side we're going to have a union, and on the right, it's negative 0 0.8. We're going to use the exact version, which is 3 plus, or negative 3 plus square root of 5. And on the right, we have infinity, so we'll put the infinity symbol. And that's our solution. Our solution is negative infinity, comma, negative 3 minus root 5, union, negative 3 plus root 5 all the way to infinity in example 3 we cannot factor it again but we'll still try to find the zeros I can use the quadratic formula or I can use completing the square in this case the quadratic formula is the easiest method so let's use the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Again, please memorize this formula. It's very important that you memorize this formula. We're going to plug in a as a 1, b as a negative 5, and c as a 7. We have negative negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is 7 and divide that by 2 times 1 let's simplify this this is negative negative 5 or positive 5 plus or minus and then we could simplify inside the radical we have a positive 25 negative 4 times 1 times 7 is negative 28 and we'll divide that by 2 this simplifies as x equals 5 plus or minus the square root 25 minus 28 is a negative 3 and so we have a problem if you simplify this this is 5 plus or minus i root 3 all over 2 so we do have a problem this is an imaginary result what does that tell you about the zeros well that means there is no zero so we have no zeros in the graph which means my graph has to look something like this we have an x squared minus 5x plus 7 so it's a parabola that faces up and it doesn't have any x-intercepts no zeros means no x-intercepts so it's way above our x-axis it doesn't have an x-intercept so what does that mean well we'll still have to figure out where this parabola is less than or equal to zero this parabola is above the graph so when is it less than or equal to zero well that's never so in this case we actually have no solution we do not have a solution because the graph will never be less than or equal to zero now just to make sure you can always pick a test point so since we don't have any zeros we'll pick any test point that I want so I'm gonna test zero that's an easy test point to check so let's plug in a zero and I'm gonna plug it into x squared minus 5x plus 7 so if you do that it's 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 7 this gives you a positive answer 
This is positive. What does that mean? Well, it means no matter what I pick, x squared minus 5x plus 7 is going to always yield a positive result. And so it can never be negative. That means there's no solution. So this is a special case. Only when there's no zeros, we have no x-intercept. And since the graph is completely above the x-axis, there is no way we're going to get a negative result. So we have no solution. Example 3 has no solution. If, however, I change the question and ask you x squared minus 5x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 0, right? If I ask you that question, when is this graph above the x-axis? Well, it's going to be above from negative infinity to infinity because it has no zeros. Pay attention to what the inequality is. If the inequality is the other direction, we do have a solution. It's the entire number line. So be careful. Check the inequality before you say no solution. Let's look at example four now. This is going to be a similar strategy. We're looking for the zeros first. If you look at the numerator, x plus 3 becomes 0 if x is equal to negative 3. Or, in the numerator again, x equals negative 5 would cause the entire expression to be 0. So those are zeros. A lot of people make the mistake of also saying at x equals 1, it is a 0. That's incorrect. You cannot divide by 0. That's undefined. We'll have another category. And at x equals 1, that's undefined. It is not a 0. So anything in the denominator, make sure you say when that is 0, it's actually undefined. We can make a number line to look at our solution set. I'll plot the point negative 5, negative 3, and we'll plot the point 1. Now we're going to have open circles for the 1. The reason it's an open circle is because it's undefined. You can't include that in your solution set. So 1 must be an open circle. But for negative 3, and negative 5, these are closed circles. They're closed circles. The reason they're closed circles is because of the inequality. This tells me it's closed because it includes 0. Now we have four regions. We're looking to the left of negative 5, between negative 5 and negative 3 between negative 3 and 1, and to the right of 1. To do this, we'll use a sign chart again to find our solution set. Let's pick some test points. Anything we want to the left of negative 5, we'll pick negative 6. Anything between negative 5 and negative 3, let's pick negative 4. Anything between negative 3 and 1, I'll choose 0, that's an easy number, and to the right of 1, let's pick 2. On the top here, we'll put all of our factors, x plus 3, x plus 5, and x minus 1. On the right, on the right, we'll put the entire expression, x plus 3, x plus 5, all over x minus 4. So this is the value of our expression. We'll look at the sign chart. Negative 6 plus 3 is a negative result. Negative 6 plus 5 is a negative result. Negative 6 minus 
one is a negative result. And on the right here, we're looking at a negative times a negative divided by a negative. This is going to give us a negative overall. Let's look at the second row. We have negative 4 plus 3. That's a negative. Negative 4 plus 5. That's a positive. Negative 4 minus 1. That's a negative. And so this changes up the right side a bit. We have a negative times a positive divided by a negative. That's going to give us a positive. So the sign is different at the end. For 0, 0 plus 3 is positive. 0 plus 5 is a positive number. 0 minus 1 is a negative. For the right side, we'll have a positive up here times another positive divided by a negative. Overall, this will give us a negative sign. On the bottom, we'll substitute a 2. 2 plus 3 is positive. 2 plus 5 is positive. And 2 minus 1 is positive. So on the bottom, it's really easy. All of these are positive. So the final result will be positive. What do we want as a solution? If I look at the inequality, I want all of these to produce a number that's greater than or equal to zero, which means I want the positive results. Looking at the end of this chart, this row has a positive result. This one is also positive. Again, I'm going to look at the end because that's the overall value of my expression. They're both positive here. That means we need to shade between negative 5 and negative 3 because that negative 4 was chosen and that is the region that works. That's the region that will yield a positive result. And if I look between 1 and infinity, that's where the 2 is. So we'll shade here forever to the right. Again, we care about the inequality. It tells us we want the positive solution. And that's where the expression is positive. Let's write our answer. It's a square bracket negative 5 because of the closed circles. All the way to negative 3. We have a union. There is an open parenthesis for the 0. Actually, it's a 1, so let's change that to a 1. The open parenthesis is for the 1. And it goes to the right forever. So this is our solution. Square bracket negative infinity, comma negative 3. Square bracket union, a parenthesis 1, comma infinity with a parenthesis. In example 5, things start getting interesting, but it's the same idea. All we have to do is factor first. On the top, it factors as x minus 6 times x plus 2. On the bottom, that factors as the difference of squares. That's x minus 3 times x plus 3. So that's the difference of squares. And so we'll do the same process. We'll find the zeros. And the zeros are only for the numbers on the top, the numerator. And that's when x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. We have zeros for the top. On the bottom, it's where the graph is undefined. And that's when x equals a positive 3 or when x equals a negative 3. Let's make a sign chart and we'll also make a number line. We'll start with the number line first. We have a negative 3, a negative 2, a positive 3, and a positive 6. If you look, 6 is an open circle because of this sign. It's an open circle. Also, negative 2 is an open circle because 
of the inequality. So both of these are open because of the inequality. 3 and negative 3 are open because of a different reason. They're open because it's undefined. You can never include 3 or negative 3 as part of your solution set because it's undefined. So we will look at the regions to the left of negative 3, between negative 3 and negative 2, between negative 2 and positive 3, between 3 and 6, and to the right of 6. This graph has five different regions to test, so we need five test points. What's a good number to the left of negative 3? We'll pick negative 4. What's a good number between negative 3 and negative 2? I will pick a negative 2.5. We have to pick a decimal in that case. What's a good number between negative 2 and 3? I like to pick an easy one. Let's pick 0. 0 is between there, so we'll pick 0. And a number between 3 and 6, we'll pick 5. What's a good number to the right of 6? It doesn't matter what you pick. You could pick 100. It doesn't matter as long as it's to the right of the 6. On the top, I'll put the factors x minus 6, x plus 2, x minus 3, x plus 3, and at the very end, what are we going to put? We're going to put the whole thing x minus 6, x plus 2 over x minus 3, x plus 3. And so now we'll look at the sign chart. Negative 4 minus 6 is a negative. Negative 4 plus 2, that's a negative. Negative 4 minus 3, that's a negative. Negative 4 plus 3, that's also a negative. And so if you look, we have a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a negative. That's going to give us a positive overall. If we plug negative 2.5 minus 6, that's a negative. Negative 2.5 plus 2, that's a negative. Negative 2.5 minus 3, that is a negative. Negative 2.5 plus 3 is a positive. And on the right, if we have a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a positive, it gives us a negative overall. That's why we use a sign chart so we don't have to worry about the actual number. We only carry, we only care about the sign. Let's plug in a zero. 0 minus 6 is negative, 0 plus 2 is positive, 0 minus 3 is negative, 0 plus 3 is positive, and if you check this one out, overall this is going to be a positive. 5 minus 6 is negative, 5 plus 2 is positive, 5 minus 3 is a positive, 5 plus 3, that's a positive. And overall, the sign is going to give us a negative. For the last one, I picked a large number just to show you it doesn't matter what you pick as long as it's in the region that we're concerned about. And all of these are actually going to be positive. And the final result is going to be a positive. Now, which ones do we care about at the end? If we look at the inequality, I like the negatives. We want all of the solutions that would create an expression that's negative. So we look at the end, this, and this is negative. So that means we're going to look at where the test point was located. The test point is located at negative 2.5, which is between here and here. We'll shade that in and 5 which is located here between the 3 and the 6. So let's write down our answer in interval notation. It's going to be parentheses negative 3 comma negative 2 with a union 
a parentheses again, 3 comma 6. This is our interval notation. In example 6, this is different because on the right side we don't have a 0. We do not have a 0. So we're going to have to make it a 0 so we can use the previous technique. To do that, I'll start by subtracting 2 to both sides. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 9 divided by x plus 6 minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Now we have the 0 on the right. We have a fraction minus a whole number. We'll make that into a fraction. How do we add these two? Well, we need common denominators. That means I'll have to multiply x plus 6 to the top and to the bottom of the negative 2. This gives me x squared plus 4x plus 9 divided by x plus 6 on the bottom here since we have common denominators and we could distribute this negative 2. This gives us a negative 2x minus 12 on top and it's still greater than or equal to 0. Let's collect like terms. The top simplifies to x squared. 4x and negative 2x is a positive 2x. 9 minus 12x, that's a negative 3. That is the numerator now. On the bottom, we have x plus 6. Now, this is something we can do. All we had to do was make sure the number on the right was 0, and then we can factor this. We can factor this as x plus 3 times x minus 1. That's the factorization for x squared plus 2x minus 3. And on the bottom, we just have the x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Now we can focus on finding the zeros. The zeros, are again, are the numbers where the numerator are 0. And that's at x equals negative 3 or x equals positive 1. On the bottom, again, is where it's undefined. It's not a 0. That's at x equals negative 6. Let's make a number line. We have negative 6, negative 3, and positive 1. Try to go in order so we can do the interval notation correctly. And the 0 would be right about here. So we have a couple regions to the left of negative 6, between negative 6 and negative 3, between negative 3 and 1, and to the right of the 1. Let's make a sign chart so we can find our solution. Let's pick the test points here. I'll pick negative 7, between negative 6 and negative 3, we'll pick negative 4, between negative 3 and 1, let's pick a 0. To the right of the 1, let's pick 2. On the top, we'll have our factors x plus 3, x minus 1, x plus 6. And on the right, we put all of the factors so we can find the sign of the overall expression. Negative 7 plus 3, that's a negative. Negative 7 minus 1, that's a negative. Negative 7 plus 6 is a negative. And a negative times a negative divided by a negative, that's going to be a negative. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative. Negative 4 plus 6, that's positive. So that means we have a negative times a negative divided by a positive, which overall should give us a positive. If we plug in a 0, 0 plus 3 is positive, 0 minus 1 is negative, 0 plus 6 is positive, and overall this should give you a negative. For the last one, all of these should give you a positive. Check that work for me. Make sure that's right. And at the very end, it is also positive. 
Which ones are we concerned about? Let's look at the inequality. The inequality right here says look at only the positive solutions. So we're going to look at the positive solutions. Right here is a positive solution at the end. That's positive, and this one's also positive. So we're going to look at the positive solutions. Now I forgot something. I forgot to shade in these circles. At x equals negative 3, and at x equals 1, I should shade in the circles because the inequality is closed. That means it includes it. So at negative 3, we'll have a closed circle. At positive 1, we'll have a closed circle, but at negative 6, it's open because it's undefined. So leave that open. What's our answer? Well, we'll have to shade between negative 6 and negative 3. That's positive. And we're going to shade between 1 and infinity because the 2 was on the right side of the 1. What's our answer? In interval notation let's write it out it's going to be negative 6 comma negative 3 with a square bracket because it's a closed circle union square bracket 1 all the way to infinity so this is our interval notation